Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode, we are going to attempt some launches to EVE because we have a window there. But first, let's take a look at the tech tree since we have 592 signs to spend. And I think it's about time we got our big rocket engines and the skiff, which will be really helpful. And yeah, let's just research that. Um, down here, we could proceed up, but we have to do the upgrade to the R&D build. Well, heck. We've got the money, right? Uh, well, it's it's close, but yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so now we can get those, but um, I wanted the seismic accelerometer. I like these nose cones. They make it easier to, well, let me research that. At least that leaves us with the ability to unlock the 300 one. But yeah, those nose cones make it easier to mount the, um, whatchamacallit, the spark engine. Yeah, none of this seems urgent. These would be nice. But yeah, let's get the additional science, I think. All right, so with the new technology, I should uh, get the redesigning stuff and see what I can come up with. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is probably a bad idea, but I'm itching to do a Kerbal interplanetary mission, and this is what we've got. So four main sails and five skiffs on the first stage. We won't light all five skiffs at the same. Uh, initially, we'll just light one, and we'll light four uh, while in flight. And on the ground, that gives us a 1.2 uh, thrust weight ratio. But if we tossed all of them on at the same time, we would have a 1.4. Uh, just to give you an idea, the delta V reading, because we're lighting one skiff, isn't quite right. It's more like this. Uh, so we got 4,700 initially. And then we have a poodle stage, which um, will probably get us into orbit around, well, finish the tr transfer and then get us into orbit around Gilly. And then uh, sort of the station part of it, uh, we've got four spark engines that will be able to bring us back mainly that's their job but uh, maybe some maneuvering around eve and to make sure that we get into orbit around gilly so i'm gonna put this engine back down because i'd like 1.2 rather than 1.15 thrust weight ratio and uh, let's talk about this so uh when we get back we're going to be using this heat shield um maybe we should put all the ablator on maybe we should put all the ablator. let's be careful um, and this has got a, nominally it'll turn around and redock with this, but I might not even bother uh, because it's not a, not gonna care about that. Um, but yeah, it's got full shielding, full mod propellant, and everything, and uh, it's got uh, one emergency solar panel here. But basically, it would only decouple from the rest of this when we are on our way back and it's about to dip back in the atmosphere. The rest of this hopefully will capture around Earth, uh, sorry, Kerbin, uh, uh, when we return so that it can be reused. Uh, but um, that's just a thought at this point. Mm, and then this will use its thrusters to dip into the atmosphere. So this will catch into a high orbit with uh, low periapsis, high apoapsis. And then this will add apo, well, uh, yeah, that'll be fine. At Apoapsis, will uh, reduce its orbit to dip in. The question is, it needs to make sure that we have the food, water, and oxygen for that amount of time from Apoapsis down to Periapsis. So we'll have to double check on that. We've got uh, fair batteries, but I might want to ditch one of these hitchhiker storage containers. Here's our general situation. Um, I have to decide whether to send a pilot, engineer, or scientist, and I think we want an engineer and I'm gonna send Bill. And that's because an engineer can repair the stuff uh, to, just in case something goes wrong. Now, you might think, maybe we should send a probe to Eve first. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But uh, I wanted to do a Kerbal mission first. I just wanted to do a Kerbal mission to another planet, finally. Uh, so this might be a bad idea, in which case we will risk an orange suit because he'll put more pressure on me to get it right. Uh, Science Junior and Goo Containers. But anyway, uh, food, uh, nearly three years. Water, a little bit more than three years. Oxygen, three years. Carbon dioxide and nitrogen, three years. Now, here's my frustration. Because we have two hitchhiker storage containers, can you see this consumed? We consume nearly 0.3 nitrogen per minute. 
compared to oxygen 0.1 per minute. That's as if, you know, the Kerbal was actually absorbing nitrogen instead of breathing it out. I don't know where we're losing this nitrogen. I mean, the, 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 the atmosphere would have to be actively leaking out of the vessel in order to... I mean, do we not have a pressure vessel? Is it not airtight? I mean, it needs to be airtight. Um, I don't know where this nitrogen is going, but basically here you see our consumable containers. We've got one, two, and then actually three nitrogens per one oxygen here, right? And when you think about the atmosphere, it's like 70, let's say 70, it's 22% oxygen, some percent of other stuff, including water vapor, and then 75% nitrogen. And basically, we're losing all of our atmosphere instead of just losing the oxygen part because the Kerbal is breathing and absorbing it. And this doesn't make sense. You know, I, I believe in sanity checks when it comes to when it comes to numbers, and th this is not passing a sanity check sort of thing. So we've got a bit of a problem with how this is being calculated. But in, as a practical matter, it would be beneficial if we just dump one of these hitchhiker storage containers because that's what's leaking all of the stuff. And th this was suited to be a station and not necessarily meant for this kind of mission. So we can sort of reconfigure this though it'll diminish our ability to use this for other purposes later. I guess we'll cover up the window. So now it went from ideal living space to modest living space, but still the duration is 5 years and 111 days. Hopefully that's enough margin. Comfort is modest, but now we don't have much redundancy if something breaks down, is the downside. And uh, now we are overstocked on nitrogen because our consumption rate went from 0.3 to 0.15 because we apparently uh, it gets calculated based on the surface area of the vessel. I don't know why that would assume that it's leaking through the walls, which hopefully not. I mean, they plugged the ISS leak, right? I mean, uh, yeah, I don't understand that at all, but okay. Uh, so we can get rid of uh, some nitrogen here because of that. And that gets us to three years. We better just take the three years and 317 days at this point. Um, so food, water, oxygen, fine. And radiation, we've got full shielding on here. Reliability, malfunctions, 10 per year basically. Um, re redundancy is great though. We're not planning to land on... Well, okay, we could just have the Kerbal EVA out to Gilly, maybe. Hmm. I'll have to think about that once we get there. Now, obviously, this is not a connected living space, but thankfully, I don't have connected living space. Um, our solar panels should be adequate, considering we're going closer to the sun. We have communications. Um, anything else I need to work on before we actually launch this? We have Delta V. So much can go wrong, but so much can go right. Hmm. Well, okay, Kerbal Alarm Clock says the window's in five days. Let me configure a prohibition to just send it into Gilly while we're waiting. You know, why don't I just launch this Eve Probe 1 to the surface of Eve? It's already got a heat shield. It was supposed to return science and did. It's got a parachute, it's got a heat shield. Seems like it's good enough. Let me see if replacing all of this nonsense with like a skiff and something might be a little bit better. So right now this is providing 3,431. So what we see is it might be a good idea to just, first of all, we can reduce the amount of fuel we're carrying. We're definitely reducing how many engines we're using, though the one skiff is more expensive than a swivel, but uh, it's certainly cheaper than four of them. Um, I'll, I'll get it off the ground. I don't like that thrust weight ratio after they finish, though. Let me just verify that this variant is cheaper than the original. So we can take a look here. 
Uh, by about a thousand, a little bit less than a thousand only. But uh, yeah, it is cheaper. And it, I think, gives us a little bit more Delta V, so that's fine too. We don't really need the Delta V. We've, we're actually OP as far as that's concerned. It's optional. We could probably take out this stage or this stage. Because this stage will make orbit and then that's the EVE transfer. So yeah, let's shorten it up a bit. Okay, that's looking very Kerbal. I'll, I'll take it. Let's launch. Only 210 electric charge, but again, we're getting close to the sun, so maybe it's okay. And launch. So you might wonder, well, the skiff has only 265 at sea level. Is it a good idea to ignite it at sea level? Well, take a look at the specific impulse as we go up. It doesn't take it very long for it to get to decent ISPs here. We're already at 310. Okay, set. And Max is out at 330 seconds of ISP and it's nearly there. Oh, it occurs to me I have an extra decoupler here. I didn't need that. So this probe will go into the atmosphere of EVE is the plan. Okay, fairing set. And the confetti is away. Yeah, the skiffs sort of take the position of a lot of Hydrolox engines in real life. Sort of, sort of like the core engine of the Ariane 5 or the H2 from Japan. It's sort of like a J2. I mean, it's meant to be a J2. Though the J2 was never used in that capacity, though it could have been, uh, as about a thousand kilonewtons, which is, you know, comparable to the kinds of engines that are used in that center engine place with solid rocket motors on the side. You'd have to have a J2 with a shorter nozzle. This one is like a short nozzle J2 because it's got a pretty good surface ISP, all things considered. All right, so we've already, I thought we were already targeted, Eve. Let's see what Megjeb has to say. I, we, we actually have a double encounter with Eve here. One, the first path is crashing into Eve, and then we hit it again. A bonus encounter. Okay, node. I mean, this is the main stage we're using for a transfer, so it's not gonna take very long. Okay, ignition. Okay, let's see what's going on. Looks like a convincing match for the path out. And we have a pretty good encounter too. Oh, oh, oh. okay, I don't really, well, a crash course isn't the worst thing. Um, before we correct that, let's just separate off the stage. Yeah, we have 500 meters per second, but it's really tough to turn with it since we don't have a reaction wheel and it's only the probe core's reaction wheel that's doing anything. Okay. Now we're probably further off, uh, quite a bit, um, and on the other side. That's a good enough start. Okay, and we'll create a dummy maneuver here. So we pay attention to it in 138 days. I think three years of supplies is probably overdoing it for the EVE mission, but better to overdo it, of course. Margins, safety factors and everything. Never know when something will quit on us. All right, obviously we need to extend the antennae, which it occurs to me will probably break off <laughs> when we want to go through the atmosphere. Hmm. We'll have to have some sort of relay thing that can connect to the probe core on here at a short distance. We'll see. Okay, but anyway, this is on its way. The Gilly mission could temporarily act as a relay because obviously it's not going into the atmosphere. And then after it does that job, head on over to Gilly. It'll probably have enough fuel given what we have here. So yeah. Uh, incidentally, the reason why the total is less than the stage is because we've got the backward facing thrusters on here. Okay. Uh, well, let's launch the Gilly mission and then finally we'll launch the crewed mission. 
Well, if we want the ghillie probe to help out with communications, we can't have these direct antennae. And so we need a good relay antenna. And we'll go with this one, I think. Hopefully that's sufficient. I don't want to carry something too heavy. I mean, I have taken off a lot of mass here. In fact, we're no longer decoupling off and using one kilonewton thrusters. That's useless on Gilly. But I still have to put some landing legs on. I feel like I need to put some landing legs on. Technically, I probably don't. Uh, hopefully it doesn't say obstructed by landing legs. I feel like it's a pretty tall thing though, so it probably needs landing legs. I mean, needs is... I mean, it is Gilly. Probably overdoing it. Well, we had a pretty good transfer with the previous one, so I don't have any problems launching right now with this one, and it's basically sunrise. So, I think it'll be a good time. And it's not like we don't have ambient light over here. So, throw up, SAS on, and launch. Look at that, very scenic as we ascend right at sunrise. Well, technically it's not happen it's not really sunrise. We're actually going up and so the sun becomes more visible because curved world, you know. Curious thing about flat world, of course, is that the sun would rise simultaneously for the entire thing. Okay, right there is fine. Um, looks like we can't activate this antenna, so hopefully it's just automatically activated all the time. Otherwise, we've we have a problem. All right. Downside is it's sort of blocking these panels from doing their thing. So we'll always have to be angled to the sun properly. Otherwise, we have pretty good coverage. Okay, well, the maneuver was done pretty much spot on, but what did it result in? And yeah, I think this could do with a mid-course adjustment, to be honest. Let me separate off. Well, can we use the stage? I feel like the stage is too OP for this sort of thing. And we have plenty of Delta V. We've got like 3,000 up here. So let's just kick it off. Okay, plotting for Gilly seems premature, but at least we've got a correction burn so that we can get closer to Eve. We do have it. Transfer to Eve, but it's just really high. And uh, finally, let's try and make sure that we are recharging. Oh, the moon is getting in the way of the sun. Otherwise, our orientation seems fine. Let's time warp and double check. Indeed. Okay, and last check on that. Hopefully it's communicating properly. And we will add the alarm for that maneuver node. Okay. So we've got the ghillie probe. Next, the tough one. Putting Bill on board a mission to Eve. Okay, so here we are with a rather young looking Bill Kerman. He's going to be white haired and in shambles after the end of this mission. But, uh, yep, here we are. We do have a lot of redundancy as far as life support. Hopefully, it'll stick. Mm. Anyway, I think it'll be okay. It's a horrible looking rocket, though. That makes me sad. All right, launch. So one of the benefits of seeing how the failures worked on our Kerbin orbit station and Nimbus orbit station was that I got a sense of what to expect with this, right? Um, leaving those alone for a while is part of what gave me the confidence to launch this mission in the first place. Because we saw what broke down and we, we have a reasonable idea of what's likely to break down during the course of a mission. Or at least a mission of that sort of length. A couple of years. I don't think it's got to be a couple of years for this. It's more like one and a half years. Well, at this altitude we can light the skiffs. We don't want them to have a very low thrust weight ratio once the mainsails are finished. <laughs> to be honest, I think the mainsails are going to come with us to orbit at this rate. 
All right, let's just shut things down for a little bit. It's getting sort of hot. I feel like I should manually pump the fuel out of this, these tanks and into the core tanks at this rate. Okay, I've mostly pumped the fuel out. I think there's some left over at the top, but that'll be fine. Let's separate them. Very nice. And we're still coasting to Apoapsis. Okay, that's a good enough orbit, and that should be enough Delta V4 transfer too. Let's get things ready. Let's have the antenna out. Not the most critical thing with a crewed mission, but let's get the solar panels out. Those are much more important. ASAP, create node. A little bit more than last time, but again, still within the stage Delta V we have here, so no problems at all. Okay, ignition. Okay, let's see what that got us. Well, it seems relatively in line. And going away, all right. Well, let's separate off the booster. It's gonna be way too cumbersome. And let's jet forward a little bit. Go a little bit normal and then we'll go retrograde to correct it. So we are now our spacecraft. We have 3,700 meters per second. Of course, we have to return. That's about a thousand. Then we have to make all sorts of little maneuvers to get to Gilly and everything. But I don't think it's going to be that much. So we could probably handle this capture around Eve without too much trouble. So we'll just do that burn at Eve SOI and add that alarm. We are recharging. We've got all the things. And let's just confirm that Bill is doing all right. We've got all the supplies we expected. And it looks like basically we're just following along with these missions. So let's do that. Let's follow, let's get to the ghillie probe with its maneuver and proceed. Okay, wow, we, we were just in about 18 days into the mission for Gilly Mission 1, and I just got a message that said an engine failed. So let's take a look. Oh, and it's the poodle. Well, that's rough. I mean, that's 1,300 meters per second we have to dump. Of course, we have four engines. With the Spark engines, we got four of them up here. Critical failure. We didn't even have a chance to get Bill to repair it or anything. It just went out completely. Well, that's a problem, but this highlights the reason why I put three years worth of supplies, just in case we have to mount a rescue mission, but I won't stage this just yet. But 18 days in, honestly. Incidentally, that wasn't even the first problem. We had an alert that a solar panel had failed on this probe, but they were able to fix it remotely this time. So, yeah, all sorts of problems right away. Okay, so we're going to handle this alarm, this maneuver. Okay, here we go. This doesn't have any redundant engines. Yeah, that Eve periapsis is fine. So we'll just wait till SOI. Okay, so Eve Probe 2 gets there first. We really wanted this to help with communications. It'll get there a day later. Hopefully that'll be good enough. And then... Oh, uh, wait, uh, this will get there three days later, so that's probably not good enough. Hmm, that's a bit annoying. Maybe we should get Eve Probe 2 into a parking orbit while Gilly, this Gilly Probe arrives, and then get them both sort of in a good position before having Eve Probe 2 dip into Eve's atmosphere. I think that would be best. Okay, we have entered EVE SOI with EVE Probe 2, and we don't seem to have any other problems other, one, other than the ones that have already been mentioned. So we haven't had any more failures. This is a dummy maneuver, and our current periapsis seems to be okay for capture around EVE. The EVE's atmosphere extends to 90 kilometers, and we definitely don't want to go into it. 
but let's check out communication. Communication is back along this way, it says. Is that right? Yeah. So the one thing about our periapsis is it will be in communication blackout if we go around this way. So let's change that. <laughs> Let me just flip it around. And you know what? I think we'll be in communication blackout anyway. So what we're going to do is the alternate method. So if we take a look, probably we can maintain communication until like around here-ish. And we will have to capture into a loose orbit and make sure to do a bit of a radial thing in order to keep that periapsis out. Okay, so that's in two days. Gilly Mission 1 will get in within that time and needs to do a maneuver, so we'll just add this alarm and focus on that instead, because crew. Interesting, this doesn't have quite as much communication as... Oh, it's why is it communicating to Gilly? Oh, I guess it needs to be relayed. I guess these antennae aren't sufficient on their own. I mean, that's fine. Bill can have control for us. So we'll try to fire the Poodle engine. If it fails, we will separate that stage off. We're totally topped up on fuel otherwise, so we can't really move the fuel into here. I guess we could fire these engines even with this, with, with this tank on. Wait. Wait a minute. It says critical failure. Maybe it's the gimbling. Yeah, it, it's working. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just a gimbling. Go figure. All that concern. It's got all the thrust, it's got all the ISP. It's providing Delta V. Why does Kerbalism have to scare me like that? Hmm? Well, good thing I didn't stage it off without testing it first. We'll keep this to 400 kilometers. We are trying to get to Gilly. Although we might want low over Eve science. Yeah, hmm. uh, well, it's not the best for the whole Gilly proposition. Let's see, set that as target. There's a descending node there. We can try and leave it there and may do a correction out there to fix it. We, we can leave it like that. That's fine. And let's add this alarm. Okay, so that's our new order of operations. We probably don't have to pay attention to the Gilly probe immediately. Let's focus now on Eve probe 2. We really want to do the goo containers and everything inside the atmosphere, and we've probably already done this other science with Eve probe, probe 1. So we don't need that alarm, and we'll just proceed. Keeping an eye on our communication, of course. In retrospect, we really didn't need the one kilonewton thrusters here either. Except maybe to speed up our descent to Eve's surface because the drag is going to be so much. Let's keep it there. And it's a five day orbital period, that's fine. That'll give us plenty of opportunity for adjustments. Basically, gilly level kind of thing. All right, well, this is captured and we'll figure it out later. Right now, let's pay attention to everything else. So, this Gilly mission first. Now, technically, Bill could do an EVA report right now. So, if we could have Smart ASS kill rotation, EVA report, keep board. And that should auto transmit as things do. We could have a crew report too. High over Eve, so not surface biome dependent. Other than that, everything should be standard. Science Junior, we've got a few Science Juniors that we're carrying. One we want to do on the surface, that's on Eve Probe 2. We've got one on the Gilly Probe, which we'll want to do on the surface of Gilly. And this, I suppose we'll keep this for low, low EVE orbit. I wonder how much we get 
right now. Unfortunately, Bill can't reset it. We want to build along to repair things. 56. I think we'll do better with low over. In any case, we'll still have an opportunity for high over because we're getting into an eccentric orbit. Alright, let's proceed with getting into orbit then. Okay, capture maneuver. Huh, Eve is looking sort of green right now. Its purple is sort of mixing with the yellow of the sun, maybe? Very green. I haven't seen it like this before. Sort of suspicious. <laughs> it's trying to lull us into a false sense of security. You know Kerbal's like green. It's trying to suck us in. Engine still works. Got a jewel transfer window next, but we're not sending a Kerbal over there just yet. Ah, uh, now we're seeing more of Eve's true colors. Okay, that's that's pretty much it as far as that's concerned. That'll be fine. All right, so this is in orbit, very critical and everything. And how's Bill doing as far as stress and all? Exposure to radiation. Interesting, the exposure exposure to radiation here at Eve is not higher than at Kerbin. Okay, so stress four percent. So, well, one of our Kerbals started going crazy at about 40%, so we'll have to watch out for that. Uh, radiation's already at 4%, but he's been out for quite a while. But we do have full shielding, so it's a little bit, hmm, uh, worrisome because we could talk about lifetime limits here. Will we be able to send the Kerbal out to further locations? Then again, the radiation should be less out to Jewel and all, but this radiation number seems like the same number that we see at Kerbin, so I don't know. Um, all right, and yeah, so stress. I mean, he's gonna die of food, water, and oxygen depletion long before he maxes out on stress, I think. So it should be all right. Okay, so Bill is in orbit, and let's focus on the Gilly probe. Okay, a one day orbit should be more than sufficient. That'll be fine. All right, so our three EVE missions are now all in orbit around EVE. And next time, we're going to do the science and maybe bring the mission back. We'll see. Depends on the timing of it. Uh, we do have some other windows coming up to take care of, but certainly we can handle the landing and getting the Gilly mission over to Gilly long before we have to launch to Jewel. So uh, we will look forward to that. And at this point, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.